I'd like to take another example now and think about images as it pertains to the process of refraction. Remember that we said that images are the apparent location of, of an object, and there's a real object in some process, but we may see the object at a location and a size and an inversion that is different from where the object actually is. And we explored this in great depth with, in the context of mirrors. Now I'd like to t explore that concept further in the, in the context of when light refracts. So my question is something that's very familiar uh, to some of us because we've seen in the bathtub or in a sink uh, maybe exactly this process. If you're looking down into a fish tank and there's a little fishy down here, I want to know, does the observer who's sitting out this way see the fish at exactly the correct depth? In other words, if the fish is really you know, 10 centimeters below the surface of the water, do you see, does your eye perceive that uh, depth to be exactly right? Or do you think the fish is at a depth that's even bigger compared to the actual depth of the fish? Or it, do you perceive that the fish is at a depth even shallower than the actual depth? Now, some of you may think you know the answer. Some of you may even have some intuition based on what you've seen in the past when you look at a coin at the bottom of a cup or uh, something at the bottom of the sink. But let's explore this using the process of refraction. So it's best to think about a light source maybe off to the side here, and it's shining light, and it's reflecting light off of this fish. And light is traveling off the fish in all different directions. Because what is it doing? It is diffusely reflecting light. When the light reaches the surface of the water, I'm going to pretend that the water has a perfectly smooth surface at the top, although we know water is often a little bit choppy. And at every point here, I'm going to draw a little perpendicular. Because the perpendicular line here is what's going to teach me how to draw the refracted light ray. Now, of course, we don't see these perpendiculars in real life. We see the light. But let's use them here for the purpose of aiding my drawing. This light ray that I drew straight up is coming in along the perpendicular. And by Snell's law, remember Snell's law, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Or I'm going to move things around. Sine of theta 2 equals n1 over n2 sine theta 1. In this case, n1 is down here. The light is coming from the water and entering the region where you are wanting to observe. This is n2 up here. And if this is water and this is air, then this ratio, n1 over n2, is a number that's bigger than 1. So what does that mean? It means that every time I have a certain angle entering this boundary right here, the angle leaving has to be even bigger because this ratio n1 over n2 is bigger than 1. Now, for the light that's tra traveling straight up, theta 1 is 0, so the sine of that angle is 0, and the light keeps on going, just as it was, unperturbed. But this light right here, let's consider that light ray. It's traveling in at a slight angle like so, it's now got to bend over at a slightly bigger angle, like so. So that exiting angle has to be bigger than that entering angle. This light right here is traveling in at a relatively big angle, and now it needs to leave at an even bigger angle. That light is traveling at an even bigger angle still, and it needs to travel in away from the surface at an even bigger angle. Same. Uh, here, this light needs to be bent very far from the perpendicular because it's coming in pretty far from the perpendicular and it has to be bent away even more. So the light rays that are leaving the water are spread out. And it's true that the light rays coming off the fish were already spreading out, but they're spreading out even more as a result of using Snell's law to predict how the light refracts. Now, if I'm standing out here and I'm looking back toward the water, I don't see the light rays as they were leaving the fish. I see the light rays coming toward me, and I see them diverging outward really dramatically. And I don't know 
where exactly they're coming from, I just see the light rays that hit me. And what I see are light rays that extrapolate back to a point right there, not as deep into the water as where the real fish is. I see a virtual fish or an imaginary fish or what we call the image of the fish at a distance into the water that's a little less deep than the real fish is. And sometimes some of us have had the experience where you reach into the water to get something and you think you're about to grab it, but it's not there because, in fact, it's actually deeper in the water than you would have imagined. And this gets us into the territory where we start considering images in the pres presence of refraction. The image distance in this case is not equal to the object distance. The object distance is how far the object is away from the boundary. The image distance is how far the image is away from the boundary. And as a result of the light refracting through this boundary, we think the image is someplace else than where the object is. And it doesn't really matter where I stand. If I was standing closer to uh, overhead and looking straight down, I still see the light diverging outward at a rate that's even more dramatic than the light was coming off the fish. And I still see the light at a depth that's not as large as the actual depth of the fish. So we'll consider images in greater detail uh, in the future.